Let's look at how to write correctly variables inside methods or functions. First of all, don't annotate the type of the local variable, so never use any type. Instead, you should use final or const for your local variables. Also for local variables, don't use a mix of both like const and then the type or final and the type because this is more text to read and it is less efficient than just using final or the const keyword. Let's look also at another case. Here we have a local variable that uses the type double. Instead use final or const as a keyword. And let's also look at another example. Here we have the type user. And as you can see, it is also repetitive because we already know on the right side it's a user, therefore use instead final or const on the left side. So all in all we should omit the type of local variables and instead use final or const. And this also focuses then the reader's attention on the variable name and the value on the right side. Instead of having such long codes that you can see, here we cannot focus so much on the variable name and the value on the right side and therefore final or const is more precise. So if you annotate every variable with final or const, then you might think, okay, I got here some value, but of which type it is, then you can basically hover over this variable name and then you see the type of this variable. So you don't actually need the type if you can easily access it here. And also like for other variables you see, you always see the type if you hover over this variable name. Also, if you want to go to the declaration of this type string, for example, then you can right click on your variable name and then choose go to type definition. And this will then directly go to the class string. Let's also look at what this value is. It returns a user and you can also right click on it, go to the type definition, and then you see exactly where this user was defined. Another advantage of final or const variables is that that they are only readable, so we can access these values. However, we cannot modify these values and accidentally do some reassignments of the value. Of course, sometimes you want to modify a variable and assign a new value. And this is also possible by using again a final variable and then you do here the modification on the right side. Let's also look at another example. We use again a final or const variable and here on the right side we do the modification. So if you change a variable and modify its value, then it is good practice to put it into a new final or const variable. In case you want to change the value of your variable multiple times inside of your method or function and you want to keep the same variable name, then it is also fine to use this approach where you use the type instead during the variable declaration, but only use this approach if you later also modify this variable. So if you modify the variable, then you can also use the type instead. Alternatively to defining the type of the value of your variable on the right side, you could also use the keyword war instead. So both approaches are totally fine of using the war keyword or the type of the value on the right side in case you modify this value inside of your method or function. If you don't modify this value then also don't use these both approaches. Instead use the final or const keyword for your variables in case you don't modify your variables. And finally the difference between the war keyword and type is if you don't initialize this value on the right side then never use the war keyword. Instead if you don't use this value on the right side then only use the type. Because if you use the type then Dart knows directly okay this variable is of type string. However here during the declaration Dart doesn't know what type this is only later and this doesn't work in Dart. So Dart will directly give at the declaration the type dynamic and this is not what you want. You don't want to put your string value into a dynamic field. You can also see it practically if you hover over your variable name then you see it is of type dynamic. So this is what Dart gives this variable if you don't define the type and if you define the type and we hover again over this variable name then you see that this time it has the right type string. So all in all you must use the type instead of war if you just declare this variable. On the other hand if you also initialize this variable then it if I hover over this variable, you see it is of type string. And also if I put here war inside, you see it is of type string. So this is totally fine to use here war, but never use war 
without initialization. So let's also apply the knowledge that we have learned. So here we have a method or function and inside of it we have local variables and we have learned that if a local variable is not modified then it should be final. And like you can see we, this variable name we only read this but we never modify it within this whole method and therefore make sure to give it a const or a final keyword. Let's also look at the second local variable. This local variable is first of all accessed and read and we also modify the value of this variable. Since we modify this variable, therefore it is totally fine to use the type. You could alternatively also use war instead or you could also make it final if you want. And now you cannot modify this variable anymore, but this is totally fine since you also can put it into a new final variable and then you put the modification inside this variable and you put it then inside of the second print statement. The advantage of this approach is that we have now two variables. First of all, the old state of our variable and then also the new state of our variable. And this can be really helpful sometimes. Let's also look at this method or function. Here we have one local variable and this local variable is first of all accessed inside of this print method and we also change then this variable so it is totally fine to use the type because we changed this variable but let's say you want to compare the old state of your user with the new state of your user this is what we want to do here so we want to compare if the name of the old and new user state the same then we want to print it to the console in this case we override the old state with the new state and therefore we cannot compare it here anymore and therefore you can simply change it to a final variable and the second variable you change then to another final variable and with this we have the old user state and the new user state and then we can also easily compare both of them. Let's also look at another method or function. Inside of it we have one local variable and even inside of the for each we also have another local variable. The first local variable we only access it and read it like you can see here so we are not modifying this value and therefore don't use any type annotation instead use final or const. Let's also look at the second local variable inside of the for each. Here you see that we have a time annotation and also a final keyword. So this is like really long and this is not what you should do. And like you can see inside of it, we only read it. We don't modify it and therefore don't use, for example, only a string. This is also wrong. Just use a final or const instead. Let's also make it clear why we use here final. So just imagine this items list is not a list of string. Instead, it is, for example, a list of shopping items. And now if we use the same approach as before, before we had a string and now we have a shopping item. So we normally need to put the shopping item here inside. And as you can see, this whole code is not that readable because we have here two long variable declarations. Let's also imagine we have more local variable declarations inside of this method. Then with each local variable, it becomes more unreadable, this whole code. Instead, use final for each of the declarations in case you don't modify the value. And now you see that this code is pretty clear, so we can focus on the name of the variables easily and also on the value on the right side. And in case we want to know the type, for example, from this item, we can always hover over this item and then we also see what type it is, so we don't need to write it. 